Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Welcome to the 115th 115 episode of the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series brought to you by the University of the Philippines. Thank you for being part of our credible online community. And for all those who have just discovered us for the very first time today, welcome po at sana po marami po kayo matutunan at masayahan po kayo sa topic natin for today. By November of this year, 27 million registered students are expected to head back to face-to-face -face learning. Currently, around 24,000 of the country's public schools or a little less than half will implement five days po no, na face-to-face -face classes. The, re the rest will be still be in hybrid mode and uh, naturally, parents have had um, mixed feelings about this. So, the Philippines po has been one of the countries, if not the country, with the longest lockdown when, patungkol po sa mga pagpasok po ng mga estudyante sa mga eskwalahan. Some are excited for their kids to feel normal again while others feel that the benefit of uh, socialization does not really outweigh the risk brought about by a possible exposure or infection to COVID-19. So, for today's episode, we will take a look at questions surrounding the exposure of children, how this can be managed, and uh, how to address the anxiety and panic surrounding that whole situation. I'm Dr. Raymond Francis Armiento, Director of National Telehealth Center, National Institutes of Health, University of the Philippines, Manila. Always a pleasure to be with all of you during our regular Friday. Always looking forward also to uh, my lovely co-host, our adjunct research faculty at the National Telehealth Center, also internationally renowned public health communication expert, Dr. Susie Pineda Mercado. Dr. Susie? Hi, good afternoon, Raymond. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. I'd like to welcome you all to the webinar. Great to see you all there. Kanina nakita ko sa chat, Raymond, sabi nung iba makulimlim daw. Makulimlim ba? <laughs> Muulan. Medyo muulan. Maambon, ambon. Tapos ano? Maambon, ambon. Uh, yeah. On and off. Yeah. On and off. <laughs> so, okay. So anyway, welcome everyone. Uh, we're just really so happy to have you here. And we have excellent speakers for you. We always have the best speakers for you. We'd like to greet everyone who's watching uh, on the live stream on Facebook and YouTube, and also those who are watching on the playback. And we do realize that, uh, you know, this Friday, we we, um, we try to pack as much as we can into the one and a half hour that we're, we're together, almost two hours most of the time. And um, as you noticed in our opening billboard, we say stop COVID deaths. And we started out just talking about COVID, Raymond, and I can't believe that we're at 115. 115 webinars. I don't believe this. So, so we started talking about COVID lang. Pero ngayon, we say, okay, we'll continue talking about COVID. So that's the C. We talk about um, other outbreaks. So you know, O. V would be viruses, I infections, and D disasters. Hence, top COVID deaths has leveled up. And uh, we, you know, what we want to do is to continue to bring the news on COVID. So hindi natin binitawan yun, you know. We didn't let go of that. And today we are going to talk about school-based transmission. But I think more importantly, we want to address the fear and the anxiety because if we're afraid and we're anxious, we won't be able to think straight. Kailangan, relax lang tayo, Raymond, di ba? Para pag may nangyari, we know exactly what to do and we are not, um, what should I say, transferring our fear to our children. Tama That's ba yun? True. That's true. Also, being able to manage expectations and, uh, well, and yeah, manage our diba? Kasi ano, eh, no? parang uh, we've done 115 webinars, almost two and a half years na ba tayo, Raymond? Two years, okay? More than, More than two, two years, years. yeah. Yeah. yeah, more than two years, and we say it's here to stay. So we, we hope na ano, ano, through this particular webinar, and we've got really excellent speakers who are going to be talking about preparations of the schools of all ages. So from preschool to elementary to... So medyo marami sila, pero they're going to give us the lowdown on how the educators are contributing to uh, the restoration of normalcy and just encouraging children to learn uh, even if there are some disruptions. So, ano lang to, parang dapat hindi tayo pangunahan, pangunahan ng pakot. Anyway, so, you know, we know also that most of you are um, looking forward to hearing the latest updates. And uh, it's, it's for this purpose that we bring you the news update.
Okay, Dr. Susie, for our first news update, uh, we get it from a uh, recent update po with regards to Paxlovid, uh, and which we all know is a treatment for COVID-19 made by Pfizer. It has been seen to reduce hospitalizations and deaths in older population uh, during the Omicron surge in Israel earlier this year. However, wala po masyadong diferensya if the patients were under 65. So for those who are 65 and over, meron po siyang uh, significant effect with regards to reduction on uh, hospitalizations and deaths. Uh, but for under 65, hindi po ganoon kalaki ang diferensya. The study is one of the first published uh, studies of real-life effectiveness of Paxlovid, especially against the Omicron variant, uh, which is now the dominant version uh, or variant of uh, the coronavirus. Po. Uh, and Pfizer's trials of Paxlovid, these have been conducted during a surge of the Delta variant last year and included only unvaccinated individuals. So, This new t study does not really address another pressing matter which regards to how often patients experience rebound cases of COVID after taking Paxlovid. But that's something that we hope could be addressed uh, as an extension po of the drug trial. What about you, Dr. Susie? Yeah, so we have some news here that California in the United States has approved a bill to punish doctors who spread false information. Uh, weighing into this fierce national debate over COVID prevention, and recently the U.S. CDC uh, said it had to reorganize itself. Um, there's this new law in California that designates the dis dissemination of false or misleading information to patients as unprofessional conduct. And um, the bill known as the Assembly Bill 2098 states that the spread of misinformation about COVID-19 vaccines has weakened public confidence and placed lives at serious risk. And that healthcare professionals are some of the most dangerous propagators of inaccurate information when it comes to COVID vaccines. So I think, um, you know, this is a very uh, dramatic and drastic step that's being taken by, uh, by the state of California, just showing how important it is that we stay true to the facts and do not disinform because this inform this information can really cost lives so that's our news for this week and uh, next friday we'll bring you some more some more updates on the news updates okay so I think we 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 started out by talking a little bit about um, fear, and I think it's very important, as I said earlier, no. Hindi dapat natin pinangunganan ng takot ang mga bata, kasi uh, children are very sensitive. When they see that their parents are anxious, they will also be anxious, no. And I know that we have lots of uh, our frontliners are also parents or also have to communicate to parents and to families. And, you know, while we don't want parents to be anxious or to panic, we also want them to have good information. So one of the questions that's been coming up is, what if a classmate is sick? Should my child be isolated? How long? If a child has interacted Unknowingly with a COVID-19 positive classmate, what is the next step? Who pays for testing? Are there isolation facilities in schools? If my child continues to have COVID-19 positive tests, even 14 days after the first symptoms, can the child go back to school? So there are lots of questions and it's good to have questions, but we need to be prepared with uh, very factual answers, with um, information that helps people think through what they need, what they need to do. So um, Raymond, I think we have some interviews from persons on the street. Yes, that's correct, Dr. Susie. So uh, for those who are joining us for the very first time, no, we usually set our discussion into context by putting up well, and coming up with what we call person on the street videos just to get a pulse of the common folks on the street. At meron po kaming mga uh, itinatanong ng mga katanungan sa kanila for this webinar. We ask the question, 
kapag may nabalitaan po kayong may COVID-19 or nagpositibo sa COVID-19 sa mga guro or classmates ng inyong anak, ano po ang inyong gagawin? Please watch this. Bilang isang nanay, kung malalaman ko na may COVID-19 ang um, teacher or classmate ng aking anak, ako ay lubusang mag-aalala. At baka hindi ko muna sila papasukin ng face-to-face kung gano'n ang mangyayari. Dahil kahit sabihin natin na nag-follow tayo ng protocols, we're wearing our masks, social distancing, and whatnot, still, hindi may iwasan na may possibility na mahawaan yung mga bata. Well, unang-una, ipupull out ko muna yung pamangking ko. Sasabihin ko na pwede bang like online classes muna siya kasi ano naman sila ngayon eh, like online and then um, face-to-face, ganyan. So, meron, meron pa ding choice kung gusto nila mag-online or gusto nila mag-face-to-face. Uh, sa ngayon, in-enroll ko muna yung mga anak ko online kasi parang takot pa ako sa face-to-face eh. Although bakunado na yung dalawang anak ko, pero ando pa rin yung agam-agam na baka bahawa kasi andyan pa yung virus eh. Pag minabalitaan ako ngayon nga, may COVID sa teachers or sa classmate ko, tingin ko ano eh, sasabihin ko agad sa akin, sa magulang ko, or sa ibang teachers rin para mas alam nila, para mabalitaan sila na ganun, may nangyaring ano nga, may nahawaan ng COVID para hindi na kumalat, para makontact tracing agad. Hindi na ganun ako natatakot eh. Kasi ano, alam kong vaccinated, vaccinated lahat kami. Siyempre, unang-una protocol, ingatan natin yung mga bata, di ba? Like, um, kailangan natin silang i-keep away sa sakit as much as possible kasi mas prone sila dahil hindi sila like vaccinated unlike us o do kahit vaccinated kasi may tendency pa din na like magkasakit talaga wala din talaga tayong assurance uh, hopefully next year prepare ko na na face to face na yung mga anak ko meron ng nagka-covid sa amin sa amin ng magulang ko wag di ako papapasukin ng magulang ko eh. kasi <laughs> nga natatakot rin siya kasi sakit yan eh hindi natin alam kung anong mangyayari sa atin. Kailangan talaga ay aware or like responsible tayo na merong like um, hygienic um, materials or things yung uh, pamangkin natin na pumapasok sa school, ganyan. And lagi nagugas ng kamay, especially. Hin- Asa ngayon, wala munang like sharing ng food and everything para din may iwasan kung ano man yung nadala from outside work ay hindi madadala sa loob ng bahay or like hindi makokontaminate sa loob ng pamamahay. Okay, thank you so much uh, TVUP for for always these excellent interviews, Raymond. No? Parang, ano eh, iba talaga when you hear how other people are looking at it and we indeed can see that there is Agam agam. There is concern. There is fear. Of course, the others are feeling a little bit more prepared. But um, I think we have a lot of takeoff points for discussions from the persons on the street. So, again, Raymond, over to you. I think you have some housekeeping. Thank you, Dr. Susie, and thank you, um, TVUP. Um, it, it's. I think that's the most that we've had uh, in terms of interviewees, no, for a person on the street. So, maraming salamat po. Um, part of our housekeeping is to inform everyone that certificates of attendance will be given to those who watch at least 50% of the webinar duration. Uh, we have already sent out at least for 1 to 113 webinars uh, all of the certificates. For webinar 114, I think there's just a few that uh, we need to send out and hopefully we'll be able to complete that uh, over the weekend. We... Um, We will work also on sending out in parallel uh, webinar certificates for 115. Po. If you have any questions or any concerns or you feel you should have received but did not, please contact us at StopCovid. That's at up.edu.ph. Dr. Susie? Yeah, thank you so much, Raymond. Well, before we proceed, Raymond, um, we're, we, we have a little bit of a formal opening today because yeah. we're talking about education and and the educational system and of course as you all know this webinar is, is a product of the university of the philippines so we have opening remarks from our executive producer 
and Vice President for External Affairs, uh, Nemi Pernia. Nemi, uh, welcome to the webinar and please give your opening remarks. Uh, thank you very much to everyone. No, so, uh, and, but first of all, now, let me greet a good afternoon, Doc Susie, Doc Raymond, our excellent resource persons this afternoon, and most importantly, to all of you who are our Stop COVID Deaths community. I'm here to do a quick summary on the direction that the University of the Philippines is going in line with return to school. UP is moving ahead with blended learning, which means we are combining face-to-face -face with online learning experiences in our higher and basic education programs. UP sees this blended learning as the ideal learning delivery mode in the post-pandemic era, as these methods of delivering teaching learning fosters academic excellence, develops 21st century competencies, and strengthens the university's institutional resilience and learning continuity. Even as the worst of the pandemic appears to be over, COVID, alongside other communicable diseases and health concerns, remains a threat. Moreover, there are other disruptions, such as typhoons, extreme weather events, disasters, social and political crisis. So there are three modes of blended learning with different levels of in-person activities that the university will begin implementing. What model will be implemented depends upon the program, upon the faculty members, and most importantly, depends on the target learning objectives and outcomes. Uh, we have three, I'll just mention the three. You know, there's blended online learning, which combines synchronous and asynchronous online learning. So this means it's still fully online, but a combination of synchronous and asynchronous. Then there's the blended block learning, which combines online learning with face-to-face -face in instances where there is practicum, laboratory work, workshops, and field work. And then there's the classic blended learning, which combines face-to-face -face with asynchronous online learning. So you've got field work, seminars, discussions, lab work, studio classes in line with your, uh, you know, the, the modules that you get through online. The University of the Philippines now recognizes the many, many difficulties that our students and faculty face in transitioning to the next normal and puts premium on the safe return of students and faculty. Therefore, the university is committed to providing the much needed support to its faculty and students, which I am sure is the concern of all other schools in our country. And it will be great to hear from our colleagues in these different universities and schools in basic and higher education, what their experiences and plans are. So that's my little spiel for this afternoon. Again, good afternoon. And I look forward like you to this engaging discussion this afternoon once again. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's uh, UP Vice President Nenny Pernia and uh, very apt. Uh, presentation for our opening for our uh, for our webinar today, Raymond. We're doing a slightly different format, no? That's correct, uh, Doctor Susie. Uh, for today, I think we will be focusing more on answering the different questions and trying to come up uh, with well being able to share perspectives from the different schools. Uh, obviously, if you have been able to see our poster and our invitation, you know who our guests are. And I hope, especially for those parents uh, and guardians uh, in the call or in, in Zoom and in Facebook and in YouTube, uh, if you have any questions, any questions at all, please feel free to put them in the Q&A box of in Zoom or in the comment section of Facebook and YouTube. For today, we'll try to find um, some some semblance of uh, resolution po, no? so some of the issues that parents or guardians uh, face 
now that their children are starting or have started or are starting to go back to schools and attending schools uh, physically and uh, ano po ba ang mga preparations being done uh, while the children uh, or the the students are in school so ano pa po ba ang kailangan po nating to keep in mind with regards to that uh, but before we delve into the webinar proper i know everyone is excited about our fun quiz so we will cue in our cute introduction video for our fun quiz segment take it away hello 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 kumusta na kayo lahat hi i'm doc Susie, the mini doc Susie. And I'm Doc Radar, the mini Doc Raymond. Are, Are you ready, ready to, to have, have fun? fun? Simply open your browser to www.slido.com and enter your code to participate. We will discuss your answers during the panel discussion later on in the program. We will have it flashing on your screen in a bit and we look forward to your answers. Masaya at madali lang ito. Join na! May kamay na yung kite, Dr. Susie. Ah, Naging isa ng gola, no? <laughs> Thank, yeah, you. Na. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and can we have it on the Zoom? Po? Uh, not just in Slido. For those who are joining us outside of the Zoom in Facebook or YouTube, uh, you are free. And uh, obviously, we encourage, strongly encourage you to join our fun quiz. Uh, please open up your browsers and type in slido.com and when you are prompted, input the code 5405717. That's 5405717 for you to be able to participate in our fun quiz. For today, we have two questions uh, just uh, as usual. For our first question, para sa batang bakunado na nagpositive sa COVID-19, ilang araw ang isolation? Is it 5 days? Is it 7 days? Is it 10 days? Or is it 2 weeks or 14 days? So, yung po ang nasa listahan po natin, at least for the options. Uh, at this point, we'd like to greet those who are joining us from the UP Manila School of Health Sciences in Baler, Aurora, from the NICC Doctors Hospital in Naga, in Camarines Sur, Antique Medical Center in San Jose de Buena Vista in Antique, the Department of Education in Maasin City, Leyte, Camp Navarro General Hospital in Sambuanga City. We also have those watching from KCDC Montessori. Maraming salamat po. <clears throat> those from uh, our regulars from the Center for Kidney Diseases at the University of Santo Tomas. From the Southern Philippines Medical Center in Davao City. From Laguna Medical Center. Those who are joining us from Imus uh, Cavite LGU. Uh, from Car Sigma District Hospital as well. We also like to greet those who are joining us from New Sinai School and Colleges. Maraming maraming salamat po. From the Hospital ng Binyan. Uh, who else? Uh, those who are joining us uh, from the UP Film Institute. They are here. And maraming maraming salamat po for, for uh spending time with us. I know it's a lunch break pero maraming salamat po sa inyo. Uh, and Question number two, it reads, Ang batang may sipon ay hindi dapat papasukin sa eskwela. Totoo po ba yon Or false po ba yon So we see that uh, there are a number of uh, uh, survey respondents who have joined. So we encourage everyone to input your answers pa rin po. And we'll know our the correct answers po later on towards the end of our program by asking our uh, panelists for the correct answer. Internationally, we are also being viewed those who are viewing us from the Chonin Hospital in Taipei City, Taiwan, from Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, from Saudi Arabia, both from the University of Ha'il and the MAM in Saudi Arabia. There are those, uh, nagpapashout out po, from the Department of Education in Bulacan, maraming salamat po, from the House of Representatives as well as from Western Visayas Medical Center. We will not be closing our fun quiz as we move forward into our webinar proper. Dr. Susie. Yes, thanks. Uh, thanks, Raymond. So very interesting. Uh, we have, we're going to have a very interesting discussion here. But we're going to start first with one of your favorite speakers. No? Um, you know, we always are looking for uh, doctors who are very effective in explaining things in a very straightforward and a simple manner. And uh, we'd like to welcome back to the webinar one of our favorites as well who is a pediatric infectious disease consultant at the Philippine General Hospital 
and the member of the DOH Technical Advisory Group. So we'd like to welcome Dr. Anna Ong Lin. Anna, welcome back. Thank you, Dr. Susie, and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the very kind introduction. Hi, Dr. Raymond. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Um, I think there's really a lot of interest in this topic, a very timely discussion. And ramdam na ramdam ko yung um, kaba ng ating mga interviewees doon kanina sa, sa segment natin. No? Si Marga, si Leanne, and I think Raymond. No? Naramdaman ko talaga yung um, concern ninyo and anxiety. And I have to say na I think this is really very reflective of what people are feeling and thinking out on the street. Um, but also, I think we should take it also from what um, Dr. Susie and Dr. Raymond have said earlier, na pag naiintindihan natin yung ating um, hinakaharap, uh, mas mamamanage natin itong kaba at takot. Mas, mas malalaman natin kung paano tayo dapat kumilos. So what I'd like to do for the next few minutes is just to introduce the topic kasi ang daming detalye, ang daming rekomendasyon, pero alam nyo, isa lang talaga ang dapat tandaan. And I hope that by the end of this session, maaalala ninyo na ang goal is hindi tayo dapat matag bilang close contact para makaiwas dun sa posibilidad na tayo ay mahawaan at manghawa. So let me try to get my screen online. There. I hope you're seeing it. Yes, yes. Go ahead, ma'am. I'm talking about... Um, okay, let me... Siyempre, may tech difficulty. Hindi pwedeng hindi. <laughs> <laughs> Just for a couple of seconds. Okay lang yan, Anna. That's part of the... Uh, part of the new normal is um, <laughs> living with the... No, with the Technical glitches. Okay lang yan. Yan na siya. Totoo na. I hope you're seeing it. Um, not yet. Not yet, not yet. Maybe in a few seconds. I see Raymond. <laughs> okay. Sayang ang minutes. Excited pa naman sana tayong magsimula na. Yeah, okay lang yan. Okay lang yan. That's fine. There. You know, the thing with having too many files open is when you need it, it doesn't open. Okay, this of one's course. the record. Oh, okay, okay. There okay, we go. Great. Okay, okay you're good, Anna. Oh. Sayang, no? May momentum na sana. Pero anyway, we'll go back to our topic, which is basically staying safe in schools. And um, sabi ko nga kanina, ang pinaka-importante is makaiwas tayong maging uh, tagged as a close contact. So for context, gano'n na ba kalaganap ngayon ang sakit uh, all over the country. Um, alam ninyo kung tutuusin kumpara sa ibang mga bansa, uh, we're, I have to say na we're actually quite blessed na hindi sobrang dami yung mga kaso natin at relatively no, mababa ang proportion ng death sa ating bansa. Kung titignan natin itong graph dun sa bottom part of the um, slide, no, um, nagkaroon tayo ng bagong peak nung um, a primero ng January this year, uh, umabot sa more than 200,000 cases ang inire-report. And actually, currently, we have 10 times less the number of cases. Although relatively, marami-rami na naman to At kung titignan natin yung ating uh, graph, you will see na medyo parang umuunti-unting tumataas na naman ulit ang mga kaso. So, um, this is something that I think we all have to keep in mind kasi nakikita naman talaga natin na pagka um, dumadami ang movements within the community, uh, hindi malayong sumunod na dumami ang kaso. Nga lang, I think the really big difference that we have now, and I'm sure you've observed this, is the fact that many people are already vaccinated. So, hindi na uh, karugtong parate ng pagkakasakit ang pagpasok sa ospital. So we say that we have decoupled um, cases from severe disease and death as a result of vaccination. For children in particular, um, sinasabi ng mga global health authorities na kailangan talaga natin isaisip yung impact ng COVID kumpara doon sa impact um, on children of um, losses from other deprivations. 
Ah, anong ibig sabihin nito? Tinignan ng UNICEF kung gaano ba karami ang mga bata or youth under the age of 25 na namatay during this particular period at kinumpara nila dun sa panahon na bagong magka-COVID. The premise here is the increase in deaths, if any, during the COVID pandemic should reflect um, COVID deaths. And what they have seen is that there is no significant excess mortality among those under the age of 25. Kung gano'ng karami ang mortality rate natin nung baga magka-COVID ay halos ganoon din sa ngayon. So this is being interpreted as, ah, so hindi naman pala ganun katindi ang impact ng COVID sa mga bata or kabataan. Pero tandaan nga natin that although the direct impact of COVID on this age group seems to be limited in terms of death, yung indirect effects napakatindi. Kitang-kita natin na yung mga may chronic illness na kabataan at mga bata hindi nakapag-access ng maayos sa health systems. Um, Nagkaroon ng impact on household income, may mga datos na nagsasabi na mas dumami ang may malnutrition sa ngayon. There has been disruptions to care seeking and preventive interventions like vaccination. And if you take all of that together, uh, syempre napakalaki ng epekto sa bata at kabataan. Hindi, na lang, hindi pa natin napapag-usapan dito yung uh, epekto ng lockdowns and uh, community restrictions, movement restrictions on education, which we know has also been very, very significant. So kung titignan natin itong datos na nanggagaling sa ating Department of Health, karamihan ng kaso nakasentro doon sa mobile working population, yung 20 to 50, early 60s, at yung mga namamatay ay karamihan nakabilang doon sa ating seniors. Ang ating kabataan from 0 to 19 represent about uh, 12% of the total cases and 2% of the total deaths. In comparison to the other age groups, this is quite small, although of course, gusto natin na mas mapababa pa ito ng husto. Hindi ito naiiba dun sa datos na nanggagaling sa ibang bansa or from the global data where you see that again, our uh, cases in the young population make up the smallest uh, proportion and uh, there, it also reflects reflects the small um this age group also reflects the smallest proportion of deaths um globally ang naging stop gap ng ating educational system nitong panahon ng pandemya has been to shift to online learning and um nakita natin na meron naman itong pakinabang nagkaroon tayo ng flexibility nagkaroon ng pagkakataon ng um magkaroon ng individualized attention in some settings Um, minsan yung anonymity nakakatulong kasi may mga, may mga bata talaga or may mga estudyante na may pagkamahiyain and they actually um, um, take advantage no, of this distance on the screen to be able to express themselves better for some reason. No? Student-centered ang learning um, in many cases. Pero naramdaman din natin yung mga disadvantages na dinala ng pag-shift doon sa online platform kasama na yung kawala ng gadgets, yung hirap ng internet connection, uh, concerns about the quality of education particularly for courses and subjects that really need uh, very close supervision, personal supervision and hands-on learning. And then of course, um, yung minimal socializing or impact on um, social interactions has been quite significant. Kaya ganoon na lang talaga ang push ng ating mga global authorities na sige na magbalik na tayo sa face-to-face -face classes. Nabanggit kanina nila Dr. Susie at ni Dr. Raymond na isa ang Pilipinas sa napaka aliit na number ng mga bansa na hindi pa nag-shift back no, to full face-to-face. -face. In fact, noong November of 2021, isa tayo sa dalawang bansa na lamang na hindi pa nagbubukas ng face-to-face -face classes. And you can imagine no, how much the educational system needs to catch up to be able to make up for those two years that we were online. Maraming mga rekomendasyon na nanggagaling sa global health authorities that will help us as we transition back to face-to-face -face classes. I think one huge paradigm shift has been to promote a stay-at-home-when-sick policy. I know that this was something that we also had to grapple with when we were going back to work 
uh, face to face, no? Ang ating kasing paradigm has always been, kung kaya ng katawan ko, kahit may nararamdaman akong konti or kahit medyo may sakit na ako, papasok ako. Kasi kawawa naman yung mga kasamahan ko sa trabaho, kailangan nilang saluhin yung aking ginagawa. Or in the case of students, pag nag-absent, makakamiss ng lessons, hindi makakapag-exam, hinahanap kasi may attendance. Minsan nga may perfect attendance pang award. Hindi na pwede ang ganyang mindset sa ngayon. This has to be ingrained in our parents, students, and the school administration so that people feel that they are safe when they say, hindi po ako papasok kasi may nararamdaman ako at ayokong makahawa. So, setting up a system that allows people to feel that it is okay not to say, I won't go in, and to provide an alternative venue to learn while they are still at home, either isolating or going through quarantine, needs to be part of the new, part of the setup for the new normal. Students and staff who happen to be feeling um, sick or unwell should actually be able to isolate immediately and access testing right away. Kasi kung dun pa lang mismo sa panahon na may nararamdaman sila, nakapagpa-test na sila kaagad, or nakapagpa-konsulta, which typically will also require some kind of testing, madali nilang malalaman kung pwede na ba silang pumasok sa school or talagang kailangan nasa bahay muna sila. Imagine if this particular setup was not available, then... Kung may naramdaman tayo, medyo obligado tayong to be out of the school setting for several days until we either find out kung ano ba talaga yung sakit natin or matanggal yung possibility na COVID yung ating naging sakit kasi nagkaroon na ng ibang diagnosis. Dito sa infographic na ito, makikita natin yung summary ng no? mga kailangan um, gawin no? para magkaroon ng safe return sa ating mga paaralan. So first, The emphasis is really on protecting ourselves and others by getting vaccinated against COVID. Alam niyo pag bakunado, syempre hindi na kailangan pang isipin kung saan kukunin yung protection. Wala nang behavior-based interventions kasi nasa katawan na natin yung kailangan na panangga against the virus. Second is using our face mask consistently and providing proper disposal for that, no? Uh, I'm glad that we still live in a society, in a country that continues to respect mask wearing. Nababalitaan natin sa ibang bansa na hindi lang uh, tinanggal yung mask mandates kung hindi meron pang ibang binubuli dahil nakasuot silat ng mask. No? I'm glad that we, in Asia at least or even in the Philippines, nakagawian na talaga natin na magsuot ng mask kasi talagang dagdag na level ng protection nito. Nabanggit ko kanina yung sinasabi natin na kailangan meron tayong policies for allowing those who don't feel well to stay home para makaiwas sa pagkalat kung nagkataon na COVID man yung na kanilang naging sakit. Kailangan maging um, maingat or maalala palagi ang halaga ng paghuhugas ng kamay. And another thing to keep in mind is really ventilation and physical distancing. So alam niyo kung pinagsama-sama natin to hindi to na iba dun sa paulit-ulit nating sinasabing apat dapat. Always wear your mask, physical distancing, air air circulation and ventilation. And yung time of interaction medyo dun tayo ma-challenge ma dahil ah uh, syempre karamihan ng mga nagsisipasok sa school eh medyo mahaba-haba talaga ang time of interaction. Puntahan muna natin ang bakuna and let me just summarize very quickly kung ano na ba ang mga rekomendasyon for pediatric patients. So dito sa uh, infographic na ito, makikita natin na ang mga 12 to 17 years old, whether sila ay merong comorbidities or may, wala silang ibang iniinda sa katawan, kailangan na nakatanggap na sila not only ng dalawang dosis sa primary series kung hindi meron na dapat silang booster dose. So eto, dito na nakasummarize yung mga brands na pwedeng gamitin para sa mga uh, age group no ng 12 to 17. At sa ngayon, globally, ang mga bakunang mRNA platforms pa lamang ang may EUA for our youth sector. Doon naman sa grupo ng 5 to 11 years old, sa ngayon, ang ibinibigay pa lamang ay primary series, hindi pa tayo nagbo-booster. 
So, para madaling tandaan, lahat ng bata mula 5 pataas, kailangan nakadalawang dosis na sa ngayon. Kung ikaw ay 12 pataas, kailangan meron ka na first booster. So, I hope no, this is something that our parents, guardians, um, teaching staff will keep in mind. No? Let's keep on encouraging our kids to be vaccinated because alam ninyo, isa siguro sa inaalala natin bilang mga magulang ay eh yung magiging consistent ba yung behavior ng ating anak pag hindi na natin binabantayan at wala nang sasaway. Well, kung nagiging problema natin ito, the fact that they are vaccinated takes away behavior-based interventions and ensures that the par- the child no already has that protection regardless of how they will act. Sinasabi ng ating Health Technology Assessment Council that they recommended um, vaccination for individuals 5 to 11 years old because we want not only to address the problem of um, the disease itself, but also the complications coming out of COVID, including MIS-C, and um, increasingly being recognized is also the problem of long COVID in pediatrics. Hindi lamang uh, nakakatulong sa individual who is vaccinated ang pagbabakuna kung hindi nakaka-contribute din sa ating inahabol na herd protection. And vaccination can also improve the quality of life within our households kasi mas mababawasan ang kaba ng mga magulang so tulad na lang ng ating mga na-interview na parents and guardians. Diba? Nag-aalala sila kung lumabas yung mga bata pumasok sa school, sila ba ay ma-expose? Well, if they're vaccinated, that's one layer of protection that they can take advantage of. So, vaccination, even from the youngest cohort, will allow a uh, reopening of schools no, to uh, proceed with um, um, more confidence no, and with less possibility of disruption. Um, COVID, as we know, can make kids really sick, hindi exempted ang mga bata sa malubhang COVID. Um, this data coming from the U.S. tells us that um, 9 out of 10 Doon sa mga nagkasakit sa kanila in the 5 to 11 year old age group were unvaccinated, tatlo sa sampu walang comorbidity. No? So kahit na maayos ang katawan, pwedeng magkaroon ng COVID ang bata. At unfortunately, dalawa sa sampu pwedeng magkaroon or pwedeng mapasok sa ICU. Naging usap-usapan yung um, adverse events following immunization at medyo natuon ang pansin ng marami tungkol dun sa myocarditis na sinasabing pwedeng maging epekto ng mga mRNA vaccine sa kabataan. Alam niyo pag nagkaka-COVID, maraming iba't ibang parte ng katawan na pwedeng madamay. Hindi lamang yung baga, hindi lamang nagkakaroon ng pneumonia, pwedeng pwede rin na maapektuhan. Ang puso, uh, ang ating clotting systems, ang ating utak, and so on and so forth. So, although meron tayong nakitang very rare instances of um, myocarditis or um, swelling of the heart muscles after COVID vaccination, yung mismong sakit ng COVID ay nagpapataas ng risk natin na magkaroon ng myocarditis. In fact, it's four to eight times the risk of getting myocarditis um, if you have COVID disease. Now, yung mga nabakunahan, gano'n ba kadalas makita yung tinatawag na myocarditis na yan? The overall risk is really low and even for that age group na na-identify natin na medyo madalas-dalas makita, alam nyo ba na ang rate ay katulad nung chance na matamaan tayo ng kidlat. So, it's 1 in 14,000. Iniisip ko tuloy kung may kakilala na akong taong natamaan ng kidlat at wala pa naman. So I'm hoping also that sa mga batang nabakunahan, no, hindi din ganun kadalas ang incidence ng myocarditis. And hindi dapat ito uh, maging dahilan na mapigilan tayo na pabakunahan ng ating mga anak. So the risk group is actually for males 12 to 29 years. For females, they have a much lower risk. It's 1 in 100,000. So once again, no, about the same chance as being struck by lightning and we know how rare that is. Puntahan naman natin ang pagsusuot ng mask. Medyo nagiging usap-usap, uh, usapin na ito ngayon sa iba't ibang mga bansa. Nagsisitanggal na sila ng mga mask mandates. Pero alam nyo ba na yung mga um, school settings na kung saan pinagpatuloy nila ang klase kahit kasagsaga ng COVID sa kanilang bansa, 
basta't nakasuot ng mask ang mga bata, hindi sila gaano nagre-report ng clusters of cases. So kung ikukumpara nila yung mga school districts na kung saan mandato magsuot ng mask ang mga bata sa school versus sa mga school districts sa kung saan pwedeng hindi magsuot ng mask, siguro naman alam natin kung saan mas marami ang mga kaso. Doon sa districts where kids were not wearing masks and um that was actually contributing to um circulation and transmission um alam natin na challenging no ang pagsusuot ng mask for a fairly long period of time and we really need to emphasize the importance of this for our kids and make sure na sinusuot nila yung mask ng tama kasi wala namang gagawin uh, wala namang maitutulong ang mask kung hindi siya isusuot ng lapat ng maigi sa ilong at sa bibig at nakasil yung gilid. So for kids, the challenge is actually to choose an appropriately sized mask, make sure that it is worn properly and worn consistently. Ano ba ang datos natin para sabihin na nakakatulong ang mask? Tignan natin itong dalawang graph na ito at uh, dito sa um um different settings kung saan ginagamit ang face coverings, outdoors well-ventilated, indoors well-ventilated, and even in the poorly ventilated places. Uh, dito na lang natin nakikita sa poor ventilation at uh, heavy exercise yung taas ng risk of transmission. Ibig sabihin, siguro kung hindi tayong gaanong nagsasalita, or tahimik lang ang ating pananalita, wala namang sumisigaw at nagsisikantahan, basta nandito tayo sa uh, well-ventilated areas, very safe. Um, kahit poorly ventilated, basta may mask at sandali lang ang pagsasama-sama, okay na rin. At medyo nagiging risk lang talaga kung um, kahit naka-face covering ay um, mahaba-haba na yung interaction. So I would think that dito sa classroom setting, medyo nandito tayo sa portion ng graph na ito. And um, kahit na medyo matagal ang pagsasama ng mga bata, basta na isusuot ng maayos ang mask, we hope that um, um, this indoor, well-ventilated classroom setting will be um, sufficient no, to protect kids from transmission. So this now brings us to the discussion on room ventilation. Uh, marami namang mga schools na pinansin na ng husto itong ventilation issue. And inuulit-ulit naman ng ating de Department of Education na uh, school settings are reminded to make sure that their windows and doors are actually consistently open. Pero meron din tayong mga schools na gumagamit ng air conditioning systems kasi nga napakainit nga naman talaga sa Pilipinas at maingay din. No? And we use that also to manage noise levels. Now, in those settings where hindi natin maasahan na bukas ang pinto at bintana, may mga paraan para sukatin ang dami ng carbon dioxide sa hangin. These are carbon dioxide monitors. There are very many different kinds They're very widely available and they're quite affordable. And I would encourage our schools to actually take the effort no, to measure the carbon dioxide levels in their air inside the classrooms and simulate. Paano ba kung kunwari 30 or 40 students na ang nasa klase natin, bukas ang aking pinto at bintana, may electric fan ako, ano ba ang CO2 levels? Kasi ang CO2 levels indicates kung nagsisirculate ba ang hangin ng maayos, maganda ba ang ventilation? Kasi syempre, di ba, alam natin na ang carbon dioxide nang gagaling sa ating hininga at pag hindi lumalabas yung hangin, lumulutang lang siya dun sa loob ng um, classroom. So measuring the levels and making sure that the levels are below 1,000 and preferably as close as possible to 400 gives us the assurance that ventilation is adequate within that classroom. Pinapakita dito yung contrast between the virus concentration in areas of low air exchange compared to virus concentrations in areas of high air exchange. Now, we want to target these levels. And these are usually achieved when your CO2 concentrations are closest to 400 and hopefully do not exceed 1,000. Sinasabi din sa ating Living Clinical Practice Guidelines na binuo ng ating um, uh, National Institutes of Health together with our um, 
professional medical societies that um, carbon dioxide monitors can be helpful to um, provide indications for improving ventilation and reducing transmission of um, the COVID virus. So nakakatulong ito para mas masukat natin kung gaano na ba ang levels ng carbon dioxide which might indicate na kailangan natin paigihin yung ventilation sa isang lugar. Physical distancing is something that has been discussed frequently. Kaya ba natin sa karamihan ng ating settings in schools? May mga schools sa talagang napakarami ang estudyante. We still encourage physical distancing kasi alam natin na pag medyo malayo-layo, yung droplet transmission that forms part of how COVID is transmitted can be addressed. Minsan pag nakakita tayo ng taong bumabahing or umuubo, talagang nakikita natin yung tilamsik at sabay ilag tayo. Kung tayo ay nakalayo na sa isa't isa, medyo bawas dun sa risk na pwede tayong may makuhang any virus or any bacteria from such a source. So sana kung pwede may physical distancing. Pero sinasabi rin naman ng UNICEF at WHO that they recognize na may mga settings na difficult ito, lalo na kung marami ang studyante or medyo limited ang ating physical space. And they say that you can actually adjust your physical distancing requirements depending on the um, situation of transmission uh, in the community. Kaya actually, kung papansinin ninyo yung ating 100% capacity na nababanggit no, for public spaces is really tagged to our alert levels which is actually tagged to our transmission levels. So isa din yon sa pwede nating gamitin guideline. Ang paghuhugas ng kamay, mahalaga. And I would suggest that maybe schools can think about incorporating a hand hygiene schedule within the class day. Maaring at the start, pag upo ng bata sa school, ilabas ang alcohol, maghugas. Um, in the middle of the day, pag galing uh, sa lunch, ilabas ulit ang alcohol at maghugas. Pwedeng i-build in itong mga schedule na ito into the class schedule para um, alam natin na consistent na nagagawa itong very important um, intervention. Kailangan pag-isipan ng lunch break. Kailangan din pag-isipan ng recess. Um, nakagawian natin na parating may recess ang bawat school day. Pero kung ang bata ba ay half day lamang sa school, kailangan pa ba natin yan ipasok sa schedule? Hindi ba dapat we'll encourage them that they eat a full meal before they leave the house para hindi na magkaroon ng need for a lunch, uh, for, a, for a snack or a recess. Pwedeng non-meal recess, break lang siya, pinapayagan ng mga bata, mga teacher na magkaroon ng maiksing panahon na kumilos at gumalaw, pero hindi necessarily kailangan kumain. Kasi tatandaan natin kailan ba pwedeng mangyari yung pagkalat ng sakit within the school setting. Hindi nga ba kung tinanggal natin yung mask and usually that happens when people eat. So we need to be able to manage our uh, meal breaks Minimize those intervals. Make sure they happen in an area that is well ventilated. Make sure that there is good distancing within those areas. And um, make sure that the kids actually spend the minimum amount of time during the meal and put their masks on right away. So this is another huge paradigm shift that school administrators will need to think about before uh, or as the school face-to-face um, -face classes start. Nabanggit kanina nung isa sa ating mga interviewees na um, pinapahalagahan niya yung paglilinis ng surfaces and rooms, lalo na kung may kumalat na sakit. Actually, kung tutuusin, medyo maliit ang contribution ng surface transmission sa COVID. Pinakamatindi pa rin yung pagkalat through close contact, through droplets at yung pagkalat ng virus sa hangin. So of course, gusto natin na malinis ang paligid, na lalilinis yung surfaces and rooms um, um, daily. No? Pero uh, tandaan din naman natin na kung pin binuhusan natin ng panahon no? at uh, resources ang paglilinis ng surface pero hindi natin inasikaso yung uh, ventilation, hindi natin uh, binantaya ng pagsusuot ng mask at hindi natin pinagpursige ang bakuna wala rin gagawin itong linis ng linis ng ating mga kwarto at paligid. Another thing that school, the school-going population needs to think about no, or parents need to think about is transport services. Marami sa ating mga estudyante gumagamit ng public service or uh, as, um, 
rented no vehicles for going to school, nagsuschool pa sila or nagsuschool service, kailangan mapag-usapan how will the kids be transported, uh, requirement ba na lahat ay magsuot ng mask, dapat ba nakabukas ang bintana, um, pwede bang uh, isipin kung paano yung upo yung mga bata at huwag masyadong pagsiksikin. No? Dahil dito pwedeng mangyari yung pagkalat ng sakit. So to end, I hope no these pointers will all contribute to the overall goal na sana meron man tayong mabalitaan na nagkasakit na student or staff sa skwelahan. Dahil sinunod natin itong mga bilin nung apat dapat, parati tayong nakamask, tayo ay bakunado, hindi natin nakasalo sa pagkain or hindi tayo nagtanggal ng mask nung nakasama natin na nabalitaan nating nagkasakit, hindi tayo matatag bilang close contact at hindi natin kailangan mag-quarantine. So, if we are consistently in a mask, the area is well ventilated, we are vaccinated, the risk of being tagged as a close contact is very small and therefore, all the actions moving forward like quarantine to observe for illness or isolation if you do get sick don't even need to happen. So with that, I hope uh, I've been able to give you some pointers and uh, that this can be um, a, a way for us to discuss uh, your questions later on. Maraming salamat po. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, excellent, excellent uh, presentation, Dr. Ana. Oh, palakpakan naman natin si Ana. <laughs> Ganda-ganda ng presentation niya. Yeah. 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 Teka, bakit? Who's that's asked you to start your video? <laughs> Uy, look at that, Anna. Look at all the hearts and the clapping and you know, all. <laughs> I think that for those of you are interested, you can get the playback on YouTube and share that with your, uh, you know, with, with the people who you feel need that information, other teachers, family members. Napakalinaw, no? Very, very, uh, what should I say? Very, very clear presentation. That's why we wanted Anna to be the one to to make this presentation for you. So thank you so much, Anna. Nakakatuwa. Okay, panunurin ko yan ulit mamaya. So Raymond, we're going to introduce our reactors for, uh, for the webinar. Yeah. And as we said, we're gonna do this a little bit differently, no? Because uh, instead of having each one talk isa isa, we're going to ask all of them to open their, uh, open their, uh, videos. videos. So Raymond, yeah. please introduce our guests. So okay, so um. For we have four guests po, no? Uh, well, in addition to Dr. Anna Ong Lim, <clears throat> I'll start off with the president of the Batangas State University. Uh, he also heads the Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges. Please welcome to the webinar, uh, Professor Dr. Tirso Ronquillo. Hello, good morning. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. It's For always our... morning in Batangas. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Lovely, lovely. Thank you, sir. For our second guest, we have the owner of the Learning Tree, Miss Francie Castaneda Lacalilao. Ma'am Francie. Magandang uh, kulimlim na hapon sa atin lahat. <laughs> Good afternoon po. Good afternoon po. We also have the president of St. Scholastica's College, Manila, Sister Christine Pinto. Ako naman po ay mapagpalang hapon po sa ating lahat. Thank you so much, sister. And last but not def definitely not the least, and you already know her because she's been with our, uh, has been our guest po for a couple of webinars already. She's the president and chief academic officer of Central Escolar University, Professor Dr. Maria Cristina Damasco Padulina. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you. Okay. So thank you very much. As you can see, uh, we have tried to pick out some of these outstanding educators who represent different age groups. And what we're going to do is we'll have a little bit of a discussion, a conversation. We've prepared some questions. And uh, we'll start with, um, I think we'll start with Francie and with um, Sister Christine re in relation to the younger kids. No? So mm -hmm. um, from your experience, uh, what do you think are the most common 
concerns of the parents. So maybe Fran, you can start. Uh, um, nagkaroon kami din ng uh, pagpupulong kasama ng mga magulang last Friday. And uh, marami nagtanong, Teacher, Francie, meron ba kayong isolation room? Kasi hindi pwedeng sa clinic, eh, kung masakit lang ang ipin ng anak ko, eh, sasama dun sa nalaman na may COVID. Kailangan merong isolation? Sabi ko, yes, we will be putting an isolation room in preparation for that. At uh, siyempre, itinatanong nila kung box, anong box, pwede bang papasukin. Ang maganda pong nangyari sa aming school ay meron din po kami mga magulang na mga doktor na inayos po nila dito last year na the children would come together ages, nang impisahan nila 12 to 17, they, uh, these doctors and this counselor that is a parent made preparation so that our children would be able to go to a covered court with other schools as well and have their vaccinations. So that malaking malaking tulong yon sa sa mga magulang no. So um that the vaccination thing is very um, prominent in the school. Very very little lang po yung magulang na talagang ayaw magpa-vaccinate ng anak. Eh we respect that naman po no sa pero basically those two ang mga tinatanong sa amin. Okay. Yeah, thanks thanks friend. How about uh, Sister Christine? With uh -huh. the, uh, let's say, high school kids a little bit older, uh, what kind uh -huh. of concerns have you encountered from the parents? Um, the same, no? Before, when we, we had a town hall, no? Uh, ang unang tanong nila is, yun nga, yung mga anak nila uh, were not, no? some really have, have not been vaccinated. So, um, it was the fear then na yung mga vaccinated ang kanilang mga anak, paano yung mga hindi vaccinated na papasok sa same school, no? that, that they will be mixed together. No? But of course, uh, we had uh, in the town hall, ang, ang paliwana nga sa amin, actually the risk is on those who are unvaccinated. No? Uh, and therefore, um, actually, uh, we have given provisions for those who do, are not comfortable yet to coming to school no, for face-to-face. -face. Pero kailangan silang mag-apply because our stand is we really have to come back. Hindi na pwedeng makompromise no, may mga learning gaps no, at saka yung social-emotional um, health then, no, It's really important that they socialize with each other. Um, pero ang, ang ano, um, Dr. Susie, I think the confidence of our parents also that we will be able to provide the protocols, no? Um, tulad din ni um, Francie, no, we, we really have an isolation uh, isolation uh, room. And um, it is really more, well, surprisingly for us, Saints ko, hindi masyado yung, yung, ano, yung the being unvaccinated and namahawa sila. But it's the concern for the elderly in their homes. Uh -huh. Oo, yeah. That they have lolos, lolas, na mayroong mga, mga comorbidities. So yun ang fear. No, that if their children will be coming to school, sila ang magdadala. No, but generally, um, there is confidence that that we have the protocols, and therefore, ayun naman, uh, that that they have then agreed also to come for face to face, limited face to face. Yeah. Okay. So both in both cases, you both had dialogues with with yes. parents. I think yes. it's very mm -hmm. very important. Na kailangan kasi na pag-usapan Raymond, eh, di ba? Kasi kung may announcement lang tapos eto na ano parang it's so it's so cold because you're you're coming in after two years of being in a very stressful uh, stressful situation um yeah you know I was gonna ask before I turn over to Raymond uh Professor Pearson no? um I would think that contact tracing would be easier for let's say Francie who has younger kids and Sister Christine, kasi ano yan eh, no? parang alam na alam sino yung mga estudyante. When you're thinking, looking at the state universities where pasok labas, no, iba-ibang classroom, iba-ibang katabi, uh, maraming nag interact uh, how are you how are you preparing for that? Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, Dr. Susi, uh, Dr. Raymond, and all our uh, listeners. Magandang hapon po. Uh, we are, state universities are located in different regions of the Philippines and uh, we may have different restrictions no, 
over, over the regions. I uh, will share our models at Batangas State University. We also have uh, basic education at Batangas State University. We have, of course, uh, tertiary. Our uh, models in tertiary, we made it alternating. When I say alternating, let's say this week they are in the university and next week they will be online. Now, uh, that's only for those general education courses, but for laboratory subjects or courses and other computationally intensive courses, they are required to come to school as a schedule. Uh, that's, uh, it depends on their schedule. They should be in the school. For our integrated school, elementary and high school, our students are made uh, into two, uh, they are given two schedules, whether MWF or TDHF. Uh, MWF, they are in the school and uh, in between, they are doing things asynchronously. And uh, every, every session, there is uh, uh, some uh, disinfection that we are doing because as you mentioned, yes, tama po kayo, labas pasok ang mga bata. And uh, we have uh, implemented a number of uh, uh, measures that will really safeguard the uh, students. We have different uh, in strategic locations, the uh, hand washing stations uh, scattered in the university. And uh, we also have some protocols, katulad ng pinasent kanina ng ating uh, resource person. Kung halimbawa may uh, sa klase, may nag uh, may naka symptoms bigla naka symptoms let's say nagwesta teacher uh, they will be immediately uh, brought to the clinic to the infirmary for testing and uh, if tested positive uh, he or she will be isolated at iko contact yung parents so habang uh, hindi dumarating yung parents the student is uh, in our isolation room eh paano yung mga klase niya na kung may positive siya then may contact uh, i-advise sila yung mga bata or they will be under observation and that class will be uh, required na lang sa bahay uh, bibigyan na lang ng teacher ng uh, uh, task or asynchronous task while uh, under observation so those are just some of the uh, uh, measures that we are doing at Batano State University well about vaccine, uh, those with vaccination and those without vaccinations we uh, allow even, uh, by the way, as to the number of students, we have 98% of our students vaccinated. Oh, and we have 99% of our faculty and employee vaccinated. Now we allow even students without vaccination to come to school because we believe we have that, uh, I think, immunity, herd immunity. And uh, I think uh, Malacanac uh, released that uh, uh, advisory that even those. Kasi alam nyo, nakatangkap din kami ng ano, reklamo or complaint or concern ng magulang ayaw talaga magpabakuna ng anak niya ayaw pabakuna ng anak niya at sabi nila dapat hindi sila i-forbid na pumasok sa klase uh, in fact we started limited face to face since January of this year and uh, as I have mentioned kami ay nag-alternating ng klase doon sa mga uh, general education courses but alam niyo yung challenge pag nasa eskwilahan sila Eh, misan yung mga bata, kahit sabihin natin na online, hindi natin mapagsama-sama yung schedule na yung online sa bahay lahat. Yung susunod ng subject is face-to-face. -face. So, ang tendency, yung bata, sa school din nag-go online. Dahil dyan, <laughs> hindi naman kaya ng bandwidth ng university. Now, we are contemplating, hindi na kami mag-alternate. Kasi nagiging reason ng bata at ng teacher na dahil walang internet, wala rin klase. <laughs> kasi kulang yung bandwidth so dahil dyan we are now thinking just to make it full face to face and uh, i-strengthen na lang yung lahat ng uh, uh, measures just to keep them safe so that is of course the, the challenge is to manage our space we have at the moment we have over 60,000 students at the State University. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's 60,000. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. in, 11, in 11 campuses. But uh, of course, there are uh, there are campuses that have major my uh, challenge is scheduling. And uh, we are we are now uh, exploring the possibility even on three sessions. But yung mga lecturers namin, let's say we have industrial lecturers 
or part-time lecturers, we advise them to hold their classes online. Kasi hindi na tila. At saka para mabawasan din yung possible congestion. And uh, we are trying to have their schedules siguro sa evening sessions just to reduce the number of students uh, having their face-to-face -face classes in the university. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much, Professor Tirso. Uh, Raymond, I'll just give one more question for, for Tina Padolina before I turn over to you. No? So, um, you know, Tina, iba naman yung ano, no? So, uh, Tina Padolina is the... Um, President and Chief Academic Officer of Central Scholar, which has a number of health professional schools, no? dentistry, nursing, pharmacy. So it's a very different kind of college student. And so I, I, I have a similar question, right? What are the concerns of the parents and how different do you think your protocols are for uh, for protecting the kids compared to the others. Thank you. And first of all, thank you, Dr. Ong Lim. Really wonderful. Excellent. Ko yun sa aking mga, sa amin din, the download namin para makita ng aming mga ibang skala. Marami, marami salamat. Uh, sa tanong mo, uh, Dr. Susie, iba talaga sa health science. Kaya ang una talaga na nag-face-to-face -face sa CEU ay ang dentistry. <laughs> Tapos mm -hmm. uh, sumunod ang nursing at uh, medtech. Okay. Uh, at saka medicine. No? Uh, sa ngayon, sa CEU, talagang the campaign for vaccination is very strong. We're even asking the LGU to work with us so that they can have vaccination right inside the campus. And we are fortunate that they are just less than, siguro, you, what you can count on 10 fingers in each campus of unvaccinated ones. And so we have asked and talked to these students and their parents that for now, if possible, uh, that they take only full online subjects. Mm. Uh, like in UP, we have uh, exactly the same uh, modalities, except that we just call them differently. So we have full online, but synchronous and asynchronous. We have hybrid, which combines online and face-to-face -face, uh, classes. And then we have on-site class. Ang tawag namin sa on-site class, ito yung classical blended na lahat ng klase, face-to-face, uh, -face, but there are online components. But our general education subjects and our institutional subjects are all full online. Only those with uh, laboratories, practicum, etc., are either hybrid or on-site class. So uh, this will minimize the number of students who are on campus para... Um, um, ma-maintain namin ang distancing although napakahirap ang sabi nga um, natin. At uh, we also have to improve the bandwidth of the university. That's one of the things we had to do very quickly before the start of the, uh, of, um, the semester to ensure that our students will have good um, bandwidth. Ang nakakatawa, nga, nakakatawa lang ngayon o no? nakakatawa Yung aming student activity center, walang complain ng mga estudyante. Pero yung aming mga opisina, mukhang kami yata yung hinuli na itaas ang bandi. Inuna muna yung mga estudyante para makapag-aral sila ng mabuti. Ngayon, uh, you talked about the health science uh, pro programs. One of our concerns now is to have, to, uh, to continue, uh, bring back patients on campus. Diba? Kasi pagka dentistry, may outside patients. Optometry, may outside patients yan. Hindi pa kami nag-uumpisa. Sana maumpisa na namin sa madaling panahon at inaayos namin ang protocols. Ang iniisip talaga namin sa protocols, for outside patients, they will have to be tested each time that they come to campus to be patients. Uh, that will have to be uh, at the expense of the students, but we are trying to get the best um, test, um, best um, testing materials 
at the lowest cost so that this will be affordable to the students because we have also to protect our students and uh, of course sabi nga nila protect those who are not uh, vaccinated so yun ang yung iniisip sa ngayon pag nagkaroon kami ng on in, ng patients on campus they will have to be tested before they come in. Yeah, For now, thank you, you Susie. Yeah, thank you, Tina. Uh, Raymond, I'll pass over to you. I know you're looking at so many questions there, and I think you have your own question. So go ahead, Raymond. Um, there are a couple here, but I think the one that really resonated with me is this one, especially those students coming in from the provinces, po, no? who would, uh, and then the schools who they are studying here in NCR, and they will be staying in dormitories or yung mga ganun po. So, uh, I think this comes from, from Edna Comilla. Uh, for those na may mga dormitory po, uh, what do they need to prepare? So, uh, and this will be answered by Dr. Anna Onglim. Hello, Raymond. Um, it was a really great question, no? From the, from the list, from the viewer. Um, I was just thinking kasi, we should treat the dorm residents like their family members. Yun na yung, yun na yung bubble nila eh, di ba? So mm -hmm. in the same way na pag tayo nasa bahay, um, there's a level of interaction that we expect. Hindi tayo nakamask. We probably share utensils and linens. Mm -hmm. uh, baka naman sa dorm, hindi siguro ganun ka-close yung magkakasama sa dorm. Pero definitely, they will be interacting without masks. No? So, um, I guess the only thing we can really do in that setting is um, very vigilant health screening. Kasi tulad nung kung nasa bahay tayo, di ba? We behave uh, with a certain level of intimacy with each other other we interact with we don't have masks we share things we stay in the same space pero kung may nararamdaman tayo i hope we've learned by now bukod kagad iba so sana yung mga dorm mates ganun din sila medyo konting alalay lang sa sarili kung may nararamdaman bukod na kaagad para mabawasan yung chance na makapanghawa pa sila moving forward pero you know it's a little difficult kasi itong virus na to diba wala ka pang nararamdaman nakalamang na to ng dalawang araw eh Transmission starts about two days before you feel anything. So usually, if you're in the same household, um, mabilis kumalat. And uh, there's um, the only things you can really do is to be vigilant, try to minimize your contacts. Kung nabalitaan mo na ikaw, for example, um, you go to a different workplace and uh, makauwi ka sa bahay, nabalitaan mo kaagad na meron ka palang workmate na nagkasakit at, at na-expose ka, di mo bumukod ka na. So, ganun din yung sa, sa dorm. Maybe, siguro, the additional recommendation lang that I would like to suggest is ang dorm, maaring kailangan mag-provide talaga ng isang lugar kung saan mag-isolate sila nung may sakit. Kasi saan papupunta yung, yung pasyente yun, di ba, kung nag-positive na siya. Lalo na kung yung mararamdaman niyan, eh, yung the usual that we feel now, it's really just more of um, flu-like illness. Hindi ka naman magpapa-hospital for something like that. Eh. So maybe provide facilities for um, anybody who is picked up to be positive, uh, to be isolated safely and comfortably as they are recovering from illness. Yeah, I have a follow-up question, Anna. No? Speaking of isolation and isolation rooms for kids, and in a moment, we'll start talking about what kind of preparations in the environment or in the physical space are our schools doing? What are the ideal, what's the ideal setup for an isolation room for kids? No, kasi, di ba, kailangan ilalayo, no? Uh, kailangan walang makakapasok doon. And then, who takes care of that, that isolation? Uh, Sige, what are, what what what's your thinking on you know many of our schools uh, well the private we have mainly private schools here you know except for the state universities but the public schools many of them don't have I would I say the great majority don't have doctors or nurses yeah so what's your thinking about how do you set up an isolation room do we have guidance for schools on that 
Um, Susie, the ano naman, there's a joint memorandum circular that the DepEd and DOH teams work on and medyo talagang mabusisi, maraming detalye dun sa JMC na yun. Kasama okay. na rin yung specifications for the isolation rooms. And basically, what we really want to do is to be able to provide an area where you hold the student for hopefully not more than an hour or two hours kasi susunduin naman dapat ng magulang yun kaagad-agad. Oh, yun lang, yun yeah. ang, yun yeah. ang key dun eh, no? Yeah. Oh, na hindi naman magtatagal yung bata doon. Yeah, okay. Yes, Got yes. it. Okay. So, I, I think, no, I mean, in as much as syempre we want to reassure our school community that you have facilities, um, we also have to think about how much resources are you going to put in there. Isang dali lang naman yung bata, dapat nga sana within the hour, masundo na siya kaagad, eh, di ba? Okay. So, ang requirements lang talaga is yun, nakabukod siya, maganda ventilation, komportable yung bata, may paraan na yung staff silipin siya kasi syempre ayaw din na matin i-expose nang i-expose yung staff kasi malamang ito lang yung nag-iisa o dalawang healthcare personnel ng school at kung parati naman siyang ma-expose, eh siya naman yung kailangan mag-quarantine, di ba? So, um, um, I think really... Um, I, I don't want to say the word basic, but it really is quite basic because you don't expect the kids to be staying there for a long time. So, sunduin kasi um, kung kailangan ma-evaluate, hindi naman yan role ng school clinic or ng school health personnel. Dapat yung personal physician na or yung uh, public health facility will be the one to make the evaluation. Yeah, okay. Raymond, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Susie. Some of the questions, especially those that are coming in outside of the Zoom, uh, it's about testing because they're actually asking, what is your protocol if you have a confirmed case of COVID-19 in your school? And how often do you do you require the testing? Uh, is it shouldered by the school? Mga ganun po. So let's start again with uh, Ma'am Francie and Sister Christine and then we'll move uh, around the table. Ma'am okay. Francie? Yes. Uh, um, first of all, Dr. Uh, Anna, thank you so much for the things that you have shared with us. No, and um, the um, I I think even before I start to say, um, what's very important to us in the school is the partnership with the parents because we cannot do this alone. Your school can provide all sorts of things. You know, the the temperature thing, then the all sorts of things, the ventilation, etc. But if, you know, we tell the parents, even before pre-pandemic days, pag ang anak niyo medyo matamlay, yung mata niya ay medyo ano, nakikita mo na, tapos he says, mama, masakit ang throat ko, you know, and then, or medyo may lagnat, may sipon, huwag niyo nang papapasukin. Even before pre-pandemic times, we would say that. And in our preschool, the teacher usually is at the door and shakes the hand of the child. But mag-feel mo naman, kuma mainit yung yung palad ng bata. Sabi mo, Yaya, ba't pinapasok mo? Eh, gusto pumasok lalo na yung mga preschooler. Gustong gusto yan pumasok. Ayaw na nasa bahay yun, no? But then, you have to have this kind of good partnership with parents to be able to help us because we cannot do it alone. Alright? When we used to teach even before pre-pandemic, there is a sneeze, sneeze, um, uh, what you call manners you don't sneeze out loud like that and if you do the children will even say Wait, cover your mouth cover your mouth or they say put your uh, head like this and when they do that you say uh, you know go honey go to the bathroom and wash your hands right away you know you have to be able to teach those things and the other things we teach the children was even before that when COVID we taught them how do you research about viruses how do you research about what is good food to eat? You can't just have, you can't just, you know, kung paga palalakas hindi nila yung kanilang sariling mga katawan. Uh, you tell the parents, mom, uh, you make sure that your children sleep well, that um, they um, they don't play their gadget until past midnight, you know. Kasi ngayon, Susie, hindi na lang ako preschool hanggang junior high school na ang learning tree, okay? Oh, so, you know, wow. Yes, oh, oh. But wonderful. then anyway, so you do things like this, you talk to the parents, you teach children also to become um, like responsible for their own behavior. You're supposed to eat well, you're supposed to exercise well, you're supposed to not, you know, um, uh, just eat anything you want. You have to go nutritious because you have to, for yourself and for your family, you have to have a good immune system so that 
hindi ka kaagad tatabla ng ano, nakabakuna ka na nga, hindi ka naman nag, nag-face mask, kasi tanggal mo ka agad, o hindi ka din mapoprotektahan. So, it's it's this, um constantly we, we teach the children things that will help them to take care of themselves as well, and the school does its part, okay, and uh, uh the, the parents as well. Parang kaya, sabi ko ka na important, otherwise, we're going to, uh, because we cannot grow children up in fear. We cannot uh, allow the, the children to no, always be afraid, always be afraid. No, cannot be. How do you protect yourself, darling? That's why you link that with your other subjects in science and then in mathematics. What are the graphs telling us, children? What does this graph mean? Okay, what is this? You know, we in the learning tree, I, I have an experiential integrative uh, orientation. This is our own. I've been at uh, learning tree is 38 years old. It's a small, small school. Lang. Pero you, you, you teach children across, across uh, subjects how certain things uh, can be understood with your subject. It's not just an academic thing, but how does this relate to your daily life? So that your learning also is not just academic. It's got to be related to how am I going to move, act, behave, in 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 uh in in my school in my home in my community ganyan. and then isa na lang muna so yeah, i won't take that and we always tell the children we have to learn how to pray for each other we pray that god would also protect us but you have to do your own protection as well but then we can pray for each other when someone is sick that god would you know be their help in time of trouble so all these things the values and the academics and the partnerships have to run together when when you are with the children. Yeah, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, for for scene school, um, in whenever there would be someone who would ha- would exhibit symptoms, you know, so we the protocol is bring them to the isolation room, and uh, sometimes we recognize because some of the parents really ask, will there be testing? No, kaitman lang antigen testing. No, of course. We cannot afford not to have even RT-PCR, but just a precautionary because we know that if the parents would consent, that uh, they would rather that before they, before the daughter or uh, the son would be um, patched, uh, parang gusto na nila malaman may sim- ano ba ang condition ng anak namin. So it, we can, no, of course we cannot shoulder it. It will have to be by the consent of the parents that they that they would consent to having um, antigen testing uh, even before we move or even before the, the daughter is fetched. You know, just for their, also for their safety maybe in the house if they have elderly. Uh, so you know, provision I'm in Dr. Raymond. Um, it's it's not really a regular testing thing you know, because it can be very expensive also, but just to have a provision that if they choose that if their daughter has symptoms or son has symptoms for our little ones or even for our college students, then they can opt to have antigen testing with us before uh, our their their child is is moved either to go home or if it's more serious to be brought to a hospital. Thank you, Sister Christine. How about in Centro mm-hmm. Escolar, Dr. Padolina? You're on mute, ma'am. You're on mute, po. Our emphasis really in school is um, uh, strict guidelines on disclosure. Uh, whether you are ho- at home and coming to school. Uh, in fact, uh, medyo napaka stricto ng aming doktor. Pati ako uh, nagko-complain ko minsan kasi minsan nagsabi ako sa kanya, um, doktora, um sinisipon ay yung ano nagra-running nose ako eh mukhang allergy lang naman to ay ang sabi sa akin ay ma'am hindi talaga kayo pwedeng pumasok uh, so very strict very strict talaga ang aming ano uh, because we had some experience early on during the pandemic when there were not uh, there were some disclosure at, at um uh, people who were sick and did not disclose when we had some serious uh, problems. So because of that, we have very strict uh, ano, guidelines and disciplinary measures for non-disclosure. Uh, and once you disclose, our health service, uh, doctors and nurses, monitor each one every day. So ako po, na-quarantine na rin. 
no? So araw-araw, either text or tawag, binibigyan ako ng akit ng doktor namin or nurse at sasabihin, ma'am, kumusta po kayo? Uh, so that is how we try to keep um, safe our environment and see to it that uh, those who have some symptoms are kept away, but at the same time monitored so that when they are ready, they are allowed to come to, back to uh, school. So yun ang aming uh, practice sa CEU. CEU. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Padolina. And then uh, for Dr. Tirso's uh, University in Batangas, uh, testing, sir. Uh, yeah. Yes. I Go think ahead, the sir. question is as simple as who will shoulder the cost of testing? As I have mentioned, uh, Batangas State University students, 98% of them are already vaccinated. There is no such thing as regular testing, only when there are symptoms. When there are symptoms, the testing will be shouldered by the university. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tierso. Um, Dr. Susan. Yeah, Raymond. Yeah. yeah, I think let's take a break for our public service announcements and then we'll be back with some more questions for our guests. So, okay. uh, yeah, go ahead, Raymond. No, uh, TVUP, uh, can we have on the screen our public service announcement for today? <laughs> Hello, Ayan, mga bata, magpabakuna na kayo. Stay safe and stay well. Mga bata, magpasama na sa Bakuna Center. Thank you, TVUP, the public service uh, uh, public service announcement uh, as part of the COVID communication PSA is one of the many creative outputs of the Stop COVID Deaths team to push for pediatric vaccination for children aged 5 to 18 years old. We hope you're able to share this message as well as this video clip with all of your social media accounts po, no? Stay safe and stay well, and we hope everyone po ay gets vaccinated. Uh, we also know that um, uh, most of you, if not all of you, are very busy individuals, uh, and that's why we came up with what we lovingly call SED shorts. These are very short, consumable, around, on average, two minutes po, uh, na mga short videos that you could see if you go to youtube.com forward slash tvupph uh, to get just the nuggets of wisdom that could be derived from each of our webinars. Over to you, Dr. Susie. Okay, thank you. We'll continue with some of our uh, discussion points. Now. And I'd like to move now to um, what, what have we done? So before school started, or some have not even started school yet now, in terms of the physical environment, what did you have to do? So let's go reverse. We'll start with um, Professor Tirso first. I mean, we've been talking about ventilation, about open space. I know you talked about um, having three classes and classes at night, but did you have to do a lot of physical, physical modification of the space? Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay, Go ahead, okay. Professor Tirso. Uh, regarding what we have done physically, I have mentioned a while ago, Batanga State University started limited face-to-face -face since January. It started uh, retrofitting our classrooms by way of really putting some, uh, some distance uh, in the chairs and even ventilation. We have provided yung dati namin air condition. Binoks na lang muna namin na bintana. In the first place, tipid sa aircon. And of course, uh, in the second place, dapat talagang nakakalagpas-lagpas yung hangin. So, ginawa namin yan. We also put some uh, uh, signages sa lahat ng classroom, sa lahat ng hallway, kung saan dapat dumaan. Kung uh, dati kasi, ano eh, uh, walang araw kung saan yung ingress-egress. Ngayon, define kung alin yung dadaanan mo lang dapat, saan ka dadaan pagpabalik. 
So those are uh, some of the uh, retrofitting that we have done as far as our classroom is concerned. And even sa laboratories, yung mga module namin talagang hiniwalay-hiwalay namin. Just to make it sure na kahit mag-sharing ng one or two or two or three, uh, nakakrawd lang sila doon with some distancing uh, between and among modules no, in our laboratory. Those are just uh, some of what we have done in our physical environment. Thank you. Tina, how about you? Very similar, really. Um, we are fortunate in two of our campuses, Malolos and Manila, that uh, the ventilation of the classrooms are really very good. Big um, windows. And so for those ones, then our policy is open those windows. But for those where we really have to use air conditioning, then we added purify air purifiers. But uh, I, we, I thank you very much, Dr. Ong Lim, for that reminder on the carbon dioxide uh, monitors. I, that's something that I will have to do uh, right away for our school. We have not been doing that and uh, we will. Uh, do that very good uh, advice uh, for for us, and of course the usual directional signs. We digitalized our health declaration clearance to make it easier uh, for students to come in. Especially now that there are so many students who are coming in, then it, we must be able to ensure that they can easily uh, pass through, so they can complete their or partially complete their health declaration form on the way to school. Uh, even at home, so that when they come to the gate, the only thing they have to enter is the temperature and they are cleared. So we have to do all of that to facilitate uh, entry into the school safely. So those are some of the things that we have been doing. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. How about um, uh, Sister Christine? Yes, in, in Scene Scholastica, um, it, since we're having limited face-to-face, -face, so they only take turns in coming to school. So to ensure physical distancing in their classrooms, we chose really the big classrooms where it will not be difficult really to put spaces no, in, in the seats. Um, and just like what um, uh, Professor Tina said, that uh, there are really some classrooms. No? Well, for the little ones, for our high school and our, our graders, um, it was a choice between putting... Um, fans you no know, because when we made our all our classrooms air conditioned so we had to do away with the fans and now if it's the fans yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then and therefore um yeah. the choice was really the parents also would rather have the the class classrooms uh air conditioned so we really have to provide also you know for filters you no know? um and then uh signages uh because saint scholastica the the buildings are are the spaces no, are quite old, no? And we had to put signages from where is the entrance, like going up the stairs, you have to designate stairs. It has to be all, only for going up and then uh, stairs for coming down so that they will not have to be um, uh, simultaneously, no? Moving in one place. So signages have been put up also for um, where they have to do their uh, hand washing, no, all um, reminders, protocols, no, to to make sure that um, the the children or our students do not forget. Well, not just for the students, but for all the members of the community. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, yes, Ramsey, go yes. ahead. Uh, well, uh, a lot of these things now are going to be beyond uh, the budget that we don't normally have because we'll have to get those standing temperature readers. And then, of course, we have them on the sinks outside where they can wash their hands before entering. We already have the ha hand dryers for the children. But we also tell them to bring your own the towels and bring your own uh, go bag with your, with your alcohol there. And whatever you need, you put it there, your, your own, so you don't you know, mix with, with the other children. No? And uh, we will have to be getting the UV and then all these filters, you know, malaking mga expenses din nito. But oh, the one about the uh, carbon dioxide um, uh, monitors, we will really have to go and get that, Dr. Alin. Yeah, it, it's very important. So uh, everyone has to be helping each other. You said disinfectants. I na sinabi ni Dr. Hindi masyadong kwan dahil 
ang uh, uh, air droplets naman talaga. But even before pre-pandemic times, after the children go out of the classroom, the kuyas, these are our janitors, the kuyas come in and they wipe the, the tables and the chairs to disinfect them as well, even before um, pre-pandemic time because another class is going to use it. And then what we do is also we have a class seating arrangement. So the kuyas bring back those chairs where they, they're supposed to be. So alam mo alin ang child na nakaupo doon. Pag kunyari, kung kailangan mo mag-monitor ng contact tracing, alam mo sino ang katabi ni Brenda, katabi ni uh, Ulysses, you know, etc. It helps because we have, we dedicate chairs for every child uh, that would help us in this seating plan uh, should we need it. And then uh, even before that, we tell the children, you don't drink on anybody else's glass. You have to do things that are um, personal hygiene. You have to teach that. They don't just study that for the subject in science, but they, again, how is this going to be um, used or um, applied to my own life as a, a, as a student in a school? Ganun po, marami yung i-invest na kailangan mga purifier kung ano-ano. Pero we will slowly do this. We have not opened. We are supposed to open by November. But for two years, we have been doing what we call team Uh, learning through technology and our children have done very very well online and so i was wondering why they want to force us to go into five days of 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 uh, face to face when actually maganda nga po yung sinasabi nila doktora padelina there should be the um, asynchronous synchronous some days in school some days not and and the alternation we, are, we had a beautiful plan for that we wanted to start that in january and apparently the Department of Education tells you you got to open by November 2. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, but we're doing our best to serve uh, our children, serve our children. Yeah, thank you very much, Francie. Very, very interesting. Uh, very, very interesting things that you're, you're doing and that you have to do to, what should I say, to cope to cope with a very mm. difficult uh, situation. Mm. Um, Raymond, I think we're running out of time. We might have to answer the questions uh, in the... In the um... There's a comment first from Dr. Anna Ongling and then we'll... Oh, go, go, go. Sige, sige. Go ahead, go ahead. Thanks, Raymond. I, I just wanted to say that I really resonate with what our educators are sharing. Um, particularly yung nabanggit po ni Ma'am Francie at saka ni Dr. Padolina. Um, unang-una yung nabanggit niya na hindi naman tayo pwedeng mabaon na lang sa takot. Part of, part of opening up is really learning how to move with this virus in our environment. So, may marami, maraming ibang sakit na kumakalat dyan, pero hindi tayo natatago sa bahay dahil may mm. sakit. Alam natin na may tigdas, may dengue, may polio, may trangkaso. But that doesn't force us into hiding. Yeah. So I think we're at a time where we already have enough resources in terms of vaccines, knowledge, treatments for us to be able to be careful within reason, but also not to give up no, the essentials that allow us to interact with each other, which is very important as kids grow up. So yun pong mga nabanggit kanina, I just wanted to say that Parang ang daming interventions na kailangan, di po ba? Parang ang daming resources na kailangang ibuhos ng mga schools. Pero the whole point of the measures that I shared is really there are essentials that are non-negotiable. Hindi pwedeng matag as close contact. Yun lang ang bottom line. And if you work back from that dictum, paano bang makaiwas na matag as close contact? kung nakamask parate, how do you achieve that? I think for schools and lalo na for smaller kids, we have to rethink how they eat. Very important. Um, ventilation, ang daming na pag-usapan, HEPA filters, hangin, um, air cons, windows. Um, alam ninyo, you can actually work with your existing setup with just maybe one or two carbon dioxide monitors. You go around oh. and check. How is, it, how is it really? What is your air quality? Baka even without any modifications, you're okay. Although in most cases, we do have to make modifications. Target as close to 400 as you can. Tapos mm -hmm. in many instances, magbukas ka lang ng bintana, magtapat ka lang ng electric fan, kaya na po yun. 
um, kailangan ba ng temperature monitor? Actually, sa totoo lang, marami nagsasabi na studies na hindi siya effective. It's really more for peace of mind. So, sige na nga po, pero hindi po siya essential sa totoo lang. Yung nabanggit ninyong efficiencies po about health declaration, that's very well appreciated. Kasi ang first and foremost intervention is bawal pumasok yung may sakit. Yes. So, yung nabanggit niyo po kanina, making it efficient yeah. for people to check themselves, engaging the school community, the parents, na wag na pong papasukin kung may sakit, very important. So yung mga ganong klasing hindi naman kailangan humugot sa bulsa, kailangan lang i-engage community at kailangan lang i-check how our system is. Um, it involves a lot of um, reflection on how our processes go on a day-to-day -day basis but it doesn't necessarily need for us to come out with a financial outlay, which is very important also in the school setting where you have very limited budgets. Yun lang po. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to add something to that, Anna, kasi um, just also a reflection on what the, what the pandemic has taught us, diba? Um, We've learned that we can do without so many things in life, right? Especially <laughs> during the lockdown, we all found ways to make it through, survive, and so on. I think um, a lot of the practices in education are really coming out of the 1940s and the 1930s. Now, we can now question and say, okay, do you really need to do it this way or can you do it another way? So I like, I, I like Nanny's um, little statement in the beginning yeah, that there are many different modalities and I think we will have to continue to look at new ways of continuing to learn. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do face-to-face. -face. That's not my point. My point is, you know, in the past month or so, ilang beses bumaha sa Metro Manila na walang pasok, di ba? Parang yes. kanina, we were talking about yes. this prior, prior to the yeah. ano, prior to the webinar. Na, does that mean that yeah. you just stay home and nothing's happening? I think mm. with climate change, with a lot of these mm. things going on, mm really have to continue to understand how to learn in these kinds of times where where so much is unpredictable and then there are so many so many disruptions no anyway so i think anyway so uh that was just uh, na ano lang ako kay ana na parang na, na stimulate lang ako ng konti na o nga eh di ba parang uh, ito lang yung basic thing balikan lang natin yung pinaka-importante, di ba? Yung pinaka-importante sa lahat. Magmatag na close contact, di ba? Mag-ingat. And, and it can be done, no? Okay, Raymond, let's go and answer our fun quiz. Yes. Uh, can we have it on the screen yung sa Slido po? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so, we have two questions. Uh, we'll ask Dr. Ana to answer both questions. For the first question, Para sa batang bakunado, bakunado na nag-positive sa COVID-19, ilang araw ang isolation? Dr. Ana? Um, alam mo, naintindihan ko kung ba't nalilito yung mga tao dito kasi <laughs> ano eh, at certain points in time, tama yung many of the answers here. Siguro yung outright, hindi mo isasama dun sa choices yung 14 days kasi ang isolation is really 10 days. Bakit? Kasi gusto natin mahuli yung panahon kung saan pwede ka pang nagkakalat ng virus. And that has been determined to be 10 days more or less. So bakit siya pinaikse? Kasi um, dito na kinakonsider yung, um, um, syempre yung mental health aspects and the need to be able to function in a society that is increasingly also being protected by um, vaccination and natural immunity. So, ang guidelines ngayon na nandun sa pinakahuling IATF circular is 7 days. So, tama yung karamihan sa mga sumagot. Pero, wag kayo. Yung 7 days na yon hindi ibig sabihin na ah, lalabas ka na sa kwarto mo, nakahubad na yung mask mo, pwede ka nang umikot sa bahay without your mask. The remaining 3 days, you still have to be in a mask for all your interactions. So, kung tutuusin, actually, babalik ka na naman dun sa 10 days na yon I hope that's clear, no? The goal is 10 days. The modifications are really just to allow you mobility within your household. But 
if you leave your room, you're, you're no longer isolated, you still have to be in a mask because that remaining three days, there's still a chance that you can be transmitting the virus. That's about, I think, 15, uh, 5%, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Sorry, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ana. For question number two, ang batang may sipon ay hindi dapat papasukin sa school. True or false? Nako, isa pa tong mahirap sagutin, di ba? Kasi gusto mo man sabihin, syempre, bawal pumasok sa school. E paano naman yun? Katulad ni Professor Padolina, may allergic rhinitis, di hindi na po siya papasok ever, ever after sa kanya. Na, recognize no, that there are people who have these problems. And um, I guess the more prudent thing to do, no, yung lalo na kung hindi pa siguro nag-face to face yung ibang mga schools, uh, baka patignan na po natin sa ating mga specialista, no, pa, baka may pwede pang gawin para mas maganda yung control ng symptoms nung may allergic rhinitis. Ngayon, kung bakong sumpong yan na sipon, wala ka namang allergic rhinitis na araw-araw mong binubuno, syempre di ka papasok, di ba? Kasi malay mo ba kung COVID yun? That's easier actually because if it's a new onset cold, hindi ka papasok, kukontakin mo yung doktor mo, sasabihan ka niya kung kailangan mo magpatest o magpahinga ka na lang muna. Mas mahirap actually yung allergic rhinitis kasi you know that it's something that is there daily and you can it's, never, it's very difficult to tell whether um, the change that you're feeling now is actually just because your symptoms have worsened or dahil nasingitan ka na ng COVID. Yes. That's one I would encourage that you really talk to your uh, physician <laughs> so that you can get pointers kung kailan ka ba dapat nagpapatest. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so we are close to the top of the hour and we're going to give our guests um a minute or two to kind of reflect on what you would like to be your parting message for our audience. Meanwhile, we're going to run the um, evaluation poll. Evaluation poll. Yeah, let's go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Susie, and thank you, Dr. Anna, for answering our two questions. Uh, at the, by the end of the evaluation poll, po, no, we'll be shifting to our speakers and then ask them maybe one or two sentences as part of their final messages to our audience. But first, our evaluation poll. It's a four-point Likert scale with five questions. It reads, the panelists demonstrated thorough knowledge of the topic. The panelists were well-prepared and organized. The panelists spoke clearly and audibly. The panelists used appropriate language, technical medical jargons adequately explained. And finally, the panelists contributed to new perspectives and knowledge on managing virus key health issues. We do not uh, send out a separate evaluation poll. Ito na po yun. So we hope you'll be, you'll be able to participate. And we will not be closing this until the end of the show as we move uh, ahead with okay. our final messages from our speakers. Okay. So let's start with uh, Professor Tirso, your parting message. Mahamute po yata kayo. Yeah. So, once again, thank you very much for the opportunity to be with you in this discussion. Uh, we in the academy really is doing our best to keep our students safe. But uh, just to reflect, we are too cautious in the university, but our people are not too cautious in SMOs. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> okay, uh, Dr. Tina. Um, yes, also thank you again. Uh, to uh, the organizers as well of uh, this TVUP and Stop uh, COVID Death uh, series. My message, I suppose, is no longer about the health protocols because that was covered very well by Dr. Uh, Ong Lim. My pakiusap uh, to our education leaders is to... Um, allow us to continue to explore online learning because this can be made very effective if done very well. Uh, I suppose uh, I'm coming from one who has been to the UP Open University and with the same background as Dr. Grace Alfonso, who is our uh, uh, director. Uh, we are not advocating for full online for our younger uh, students. But definitely the benefits of online learning 
are very, very uh, important and are very good even for younger children. So we should continue exploring that. Sayang naman ang technology na, na, na napag-aralan na rin naman at nakita na epektibo sa mga ibang, sa mga ibang aspeto ng pag-aaral. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. Um, let's have um, Sister Christine. Yes, uh, I also would like to thank the organizers uh, of this webinar and the opportunity to be able to, to interact and um, also explore the many possibilities still for us uh, as educators. Um, and I think I, I'd like just to emphasize that for us, no, um, the responsibility is not just for one's own health, but it's actually to no to be to for the health of everyone of each and every person in in, in our school communities. No, so it's not just we are not just protecting ourselves, but we are really protecting each other. And I would like to second no what um uh, Professor Tina was saying that um, although uh, it has been difficult when we first adjusted with with online learning, but we saw really how our students have been, been resilient and have actually mastered certain skills that is mm -hmm. very good also as part of education, as part of learning. So it is a mixture. You know, we cannot just abandon what we have started also um, and what has really been very effective. But yes, you know, uh, for us also in the academe to be given that freedom also to, to explore what how else we can give the best environment for our students that they may be able to really make the most of their education. So maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Sister Christine of St. Scholasticus. And uh, Francie, as the uh -huh. uh, Yes, I'd like to thank uh, UPTV for this. It's very wonderful because I will use your slides and your videos in the classroom for children to discuss, even if it's online or whether we eventually come face to face, because then they'll see how these uh, things are, are will be applied to their lives. And it will also help children to think critically and find out ways to be able not to be tagged as a close contact. No? So I think we cannot grow a, gr a generation of fearful children. We need to work all together so that they can live freely and uh, pray that we will have a nation that is strong and healthy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Fran. Okay, Dr. Anna Ong Lim. Anna, mm -hmm. talaga na lecture mo, Anna. Sige. <laughs> Thank you. Um, alam nyo, um, nagsimula po yung ating webinar with um, parents expressing their anxiety about going back to school. And I hope at the end of this webinar, medyo nabawi natin ng konti yung kabangi. Sana nakatulong itong pag-uusap natin dun sa mga measures na dapat gawin sa mga schools na hindi rin naman na iba dun sa ginagawa natin ngayon sa iba't iba pang mga workplaces kung saan nagsibalik na tayo sa trabaho. Now kung yon kinaya natin, kaya din ng mga bata. Pero kailangan magtulong-tulong tayo lahat. We have to think about the school community as our family. At kung anumang konsiderasyon ang meron natin para sa ating mga pamilya na iniiwasan nating makahawa, dapat ganun mm -hmm. din attitude natin sa school. Para lahat naman tayo makapag-transition very successfully no, into face-to-face -face learning if it is the option that is preferred by that school community. Hindi dapat din siguro mawala yung uh, opportunities that online learning provided for us. But I think we have to recognize the limitations also, particularly in our setting where gadgets and internet access continue to be challenging for the majority of our population. Pero hindi imposible basta nagtutulong-tulong po tayo lahat. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much, Anna. And to round up our discussion, we have uh, Chancellor Menchip. Is it is it Manchit or is it going to be Stella? Nako, sorry, ah. Raymond, si the Stella Chancellor. Bausi. Chancellor, Chancellor, okay. Yeah. So you have yeah. Chancellor Manchit Padilla of UP Manila. Manchit, go ahead. Okay. Is it safe to go back to school? Today's webinar tackles the measures undertaken by schools in safeguarding the safety of our children. The webinar was opened by UP Vice President for Public Affairs and Executive Producer of TVUP, 
Nanny, Dr. Nanny Pernia. Dr. Pernia shared UP's preparations for, for the new normal. UP has a combination of face-to-face -face and blended learning, which comes in three forms. One is a blended online learning, which is fully online, a mix of synchronous and asynchronous classes. Second will be the blended block learning, blocks of independent online with face-to-face -face for practicum and lab work. And the third will be the classic face-to-face, -face, which alternates or rotates face-to-face -face sessions with the field, field work and the lab work. So VP Nenny ends by saying that UP is committed to continuity of learning. Our main speaker is Dr. Anna Onglin, who starts her talk by saying, let us manage our fear. Compared to other countries, we are blessed because we have less cases in the Philippines. And because of vaccination, we have less severe cases. For the children's population, there was a review of the impact of COVID compared to the deprivations from other causes. There is no excess mortality before the age of 25. What is evident is that children with other medical problems failed to access health care because of COVID restrictions. Dr. Anna discussed the advantages and disadvantages of online classes and moved on to share six ways on how to reduce COVID-19 risk in the school. One, protect yourself and others. Get vaccinated. Two, use the mask consistently and properly. Three, stay home when sick and inform the school. Number four, keep the hands clean and you can actually integrate hand hygiene in the schedule in the classroom. Number five, open the windows and as an additional measure, monitor the carbon dioxide level and it must be close to 400. And six, but not the least, uh, physical distancing even during recess and lunch breaks. Here are the recommendations for the vaccination of pedi pediatric patients for ages 12 to 17 years old, whether with comorbidities or none, they should have received by this time primary, the primary doses as well as the first booster dose. For 5 to 11 years old, they should have received the primary doses. HTAC, um, our HTAC in the Philippines recommends children uh, vaccination of the children for the following reasons. Number one, to reduce the infections to pediatric population. Two, to contribute to achieving herd immunity. Three, to improve the quality of life. And fourth will be to enable the reopening of classes. Dr. Anna ends by saying that it's time for the school gates to open. And remember that the goal, the goal is to ensure that no one in school is classified as a close contact. Our reactors came from various sectors. Sister Christine Pinto, Professor Tirso Ronquillo, Professor Tina Padolina, and uh, Dr. Franci, Franci uh, Lacalinao. Sister Christine and Professor Franci um, started you know, with the concerns of their parents. Availability of isolation room, the risk of mixing the vaccinated and non-vaccinated children, and the fear that the children will bring home COVID to the grandparents. And Sister Christine said that it really helps to clarify that the risk is on those for the unvaccinated. Now for the tertiary level, Professor Tears and Professor Tina shared the complexity of having thousands of students going back to the school and bandwidth was a shared problem. And as you've heard through the, the whole uh, webinar, there is no single strategy. And I urge you to watch the replay and listen to their stories their proactive efforts to keep the classroom safe, mixing the face-to-face -face with blended, mixing of synchronous and asynchronous terminology may be different, but the general goal is the reduction of the number of students and, and faculty inside the school. The partnership with parents was emphasized by Professor Franchi. The importance of strict disclosure of symptoms to avoid spread was emphasized by Professor Tina. So, you know, I hope that our viewers today and those who will view the, the playback will, well, those who are here now, appreciated the preparations being done by the schools across the ages. And it's really time to leave the fear behind and take the first step. And that is to be informed. And as Dr. Anna said, let us manage our fear. And as our educators have shared, let's not give up the essentials of growing up learning from our teachers face-to-face, -face, learning from our classmates face-to-face. -face. Magandang, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat and thank you for staying with us.
Thank you. Thank you, Ami Plata. Talaga ang ganda na ang summary ni ano, ni Chancellor. Okay, next week, ay, nako, don't miss it, ha? Tsaka imbitahin yung iba. We're going to do grand rounds next week. We will have a case of long COVID at the Philippine General Hospital. I think many of you want to know a little bit more about this. In recent weeks, there has been so much news about concerns about long COVID and people who got sick in 2021 who are still sick up to now. So we're going to take an actual case from the Philippine General Hospital. Please join us. We're going to have Nina Burba, one of your favorites, and Jubert Benedicto, head of the ICU of PGH. So join us next week. Raymond, over to you. Thank you so much, Chancellor. And thank you, Dr. Susie. Uh, on In front of your screens, you'll be able to see um, the results of our evaluation poll. Po, no? So at least 93% of our respondents uh, strongly agree and uh, really express their um, concurrence and agreement with regards to this webinar and how much they have learned and appreciated the nuggets of wisdom shared by our speakers <clears throat> but before we conclude uh, we would like to uh, sorry we would like to first thank the very hard working team behind the stop covid deaths webinar series so without each and every one of you we won't be able to churn out quality content week in week out and finally all Stop COVID Deaths webinars are archived for viewing at the TVUP YouTube channel for your convenience. So you just go to youtube.com forward slash TVUPPH for you to be able to see all 114 webinars. And then after today, it will be 115. Uh, very cogent po yung mga nailagay and very practical tips, especially those given by our speakers and uh, our main speaker, Dr. Anna Ong Lim. If you have any questions, again, please do not hesitate to contact us at stopcoviddeaths at up.edu.ph. In the chat, you will also be able to see how, you'd be, you know, how you can register for our webinars for the rest of the year. So maraming maraming salamat po uh, sa inyong lahat. Uh, this formally closes our webinar for the week. And we look forward again to your company next Friday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. It's a date. Together, we can stop COVID deaths. So keep safe, keep healthy, and see you online. <laughs>